Okay, for this, you said create APE files for your PCR products. What are our PCR products? The primer. The primer specific? Yeah, I gave you the primer, and then you can find out the PCR. Uh, which which we probably can go through that assignment if, if yeah. that's a problem. Yeah. That's the uh, assignment, which one? Uh, that's the last one. APE, RE, and I. Yeah. Okay, Thursday. Okay, yeah. So. Okay, uh, let, let's, uh, since I'm on a dummy sequence, so let's make sure uh, you know some of the FTE feature we can. Uh, so this one will be first, uh, this one is a bit complicated than the, the one I gave you last time because I didn't give you the OIS, so you're supposed to find the, the OIS. So For which one? For the wild type and the so, but the operating from each are the same in one time, usually. Right? Unless the mutant have a stop to an nonsense. Not a nonsense. Yeah, nonsense, pre uh, the nonsense mutation. Is this for the um, assignment? No, this is an uh, exercise just for review practice. Oh, okay. For, uh, exam, you say if there is a nonsense sensation, what's, what's, what, what's going to happen? Then the operating frame may be uh, changed. Right. So this is operating frame here, so the largest one. Uh, so it actually, they seem to be multiple. This is one, another one, but you find who found the longest one. So this is, but that's all, that seems to be all short operating frame. You want to find another one. Uh, There will be a study code down here. So we want to unlock the data AT, ATG here. Okay, that's the longest uh, operating frame. So then you can do translation. Uh, right, so 40 to 786, that's a protein translation. Right? That's the operating frame? Or that's the translation the longest, for the operating frame? Right, right, I select from 40 to 786. So you always want the longest operating frame? Uh, well, the answer to that question probably is no. It actually depends on the question asked. If the question asks a specific operating frame, then probably uh, in, Especially in new project genome, sometimes there are multiple splicing items. And that's very complicated. But I doubt we will give you that kind of complicated question in the exam, so it probably seems to be forward. Okay. So, yeah. and for the exercise, it's actually not my intention to give you multiple operating track. I usually just pick the last one. But it just happened there are, there are some internal ATG, so there are multiple operating. But I, it's basically, let's just pick the largest operating yes. I want to pick the largest, which is uh, yeah, or you can just write it down, uh, which one in the line. Uh, in this case, 40 to 786, there are 246. Uh, so if I pick a different one, if I automatic complex, and then I do translation. I mean, it's obviously a little bit short. Uh, so, right, so this one is 508 to 786, I mean 92. So, and I look at this side, you, you, you can see the second one is basically part of the protein of the first one. That's because the first one is ended at the 786, the second one is just from internal to the last one. So it's just a fragment of the previous one. So, uh, so this one definitely is not. I guess what I was saying was um, I saw that you looked at the map. Uh, yeah, that so, map actually is kind of confusing. So yeah. I would, yeah, yeah, yeah it, because they seem to label all the APG even outside of the operating frame. So, okay. yeah, it's probably more straightforward just look at the, the translation. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. so that, the idea is you have a wild type and then you can basically do the same thing for the mutant. Uh, in this case, I said new sequences. 
I, I probably want to save this and to make sure this is the new one. And then I say, find the next. Did you put that on our page? Or you on our own section, yeah. OK, now I found the largest one. So then do translation. Translate again. Translate. Okay. <laughs> 40 to 786 to 40. So now you see the wild type and mutant have the same length of translation. So I know this is not a, a nonsense mutation. This must be, a, look like a polymutation. mutation. And it's also unlikely to be a mis, a mis friend friendship mutation. Friendship often have a lot of change. So, I'm confused as to the purpose of this. Oh, uh, it, it's basically the uh, find out the open reading friend identify what the mutation is. This oh. is I, I I gave you two sequences, a wild type and a mutant. I ask you to uh, uh, basically just a different angles to make sure you know how to read. Find out that the what's what is the mutation and then. Found out a, res uh, a restriction enzyme to distinguish a uh, wild type and mutin. And for this time, uh, I also give you a pair of primers. And you can also see what is the PCR fragment size of it. Can this pair of primer work on the mutation we want to identify? Is this set of primer going to work? Yeah. So, see. this is probably going to. A, a similar question may be appear in the exam, probably posing in different ways. So this is just another exercise. So, so you'll ask us to find the open reading frame, and then what kind of mutation it is? Right, yeah. But well, that means we got to go through those steps of the MPE cutter and the um, cluster W2. Excellent, that's right. <laughs> so, so first, uh, uh, well, first you can align the two sequences, right? So, Align the two sequences. Uh, oh, I did this. Let me save the first one. The wild type so it's more clear. So that's my new thing. I'm going to save my first one as wild type. So then I just align the two uh, wild type at top, new thing at the bottom, and then I just have alignment. See where that mutation is. Uh -huh, I, see, I, I see a mutation roughly around 800 or something. Oh, 786. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, sorry, this is probably not designed probably. So I actually had the mutation outside of the upper reading frame. So this is a mutation in the oh. five, three prime UTR region. Sorry, <laughs> this is a mutation in more complicated than I. <laughs> I sorry, I, I didn't design this question properly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, just just to make sure, right? We do the open reading frame, right? And then we copy that part and put it into a new document so that we do the alignment of that, or you do the alignment of the whole thing. Alignment of the whole thing. Either way, it should work. Uh, you basically identify what the mutation is. But it's probably easier to identify them from based on original sequence so you know where it is. And uh, you can you can also do the operating frame, but it won't work here because I somehow put a mutation outside of the operating frame. Okay. Yeah. My second question was yeah. if we don't need to do the alignment of the open reading frame, why did what's the importance of doing the open reading frame? What would uh, what would you do with that? If the mutation changes the amino acid, you can know whether that mutation is missense mutation or what it is. But if it change, if the original, uh, maybe I, I'm going to change the sequence. If the original sequence, if there is a mutation, say at uh, 100, uh, 154 position, the original amino acid is P, probably, and you change to S, that's then you can tell. If you don't do the Translation and alignment, you won't be able to do this. So that's uh, my. Uh, let me let me change the mutant sequence to something else. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to. Uh, let me change it to the mutant sequence.
So I'm going to delete uh, the this one and, and replace it with the wild type. With this one, try to put a mutation in the middle. Uh, mutant instead of a mutant. Let, let's just call it mutant two for clarity. Uh, I'm going to pick a, uh, some region. There's TTT here, so I'm going to change that TTT to to what? Uh, C, C, C. Okay, this time it should work. Uh, hopefully, I, I, I'm not changing my primer. Uh, let's see.
this is basically my mutation. Oh. Uh, this is basically my mutation. Something changed from F to P. F to P. Yeah. So, so basically this is mutation. The, the top is the wild type and the bottom is the mutant. This is basically something changed from F to P, that's my intention. So the open reading frame, it matters, but like if you put the whole thing into cluster, you'll still get where the mutation is. No, then you just align the nucleus matter, DNA. If you don't translate, you just you just aligning the nucleus matter. Mm -hmm. But that's the same thing we already did in the okay. But if, this is aligning of the protein sequence. The translated. Operation. What if you translated the whole thing? I uh, try it. If you, you translate the whole thing, see what happens. You see what the mutation is if you like organize mm -hmm. the whole thing. Right. Like the open reading thing only gives you like a start for a start for the next step. Right. Start. How many ways can you translate a gene? But see, that's what I was asking you. Yeah. What would be the difference between doing the open reading thing and then translating the whole thing? You said no. Try it. Try it. Try it. Translate the whole thing. See what happens. So basically what you're saying is it's more accurate to just do the open reading frame because they'll show uh, you Not just accurate, in fact, you try to translate the whole thing and see what happens. Because how, how many ways can you translate a DNA sequence? There will be six different ways you can translate a nucleotide sequence. So only the open reading frame can give you a meaningful protein sequence. So in fact, I can I can do the well. If I go to AP, just highlight the whole thing uh, to a translate. All right. You, you see how many uh, dot you see in the middle? That means do the uh, uh, stop codon. So it it make that don't make sense. A protein sequence shouldn't have stop codon in the middle. Mm -hmm. it, this is not a functional protein sequence. It, the reason why the open reading frame is because in, in any protein sequence, it, you should not have a stop code down there. Yeah. And it's also because the, there is a reading frame on the DNA sequence. Right? So, so every I mean, every, most of the sequence start with ATG, but I don't have to translate from AT, ATG. I can translate from, say, if the next one is C, C, T, I can translate from TGC. Why, why not? Right. But that won't give you the functional. That will be a different frame. I can also start from G, GCC, that's my first code. But that will also give you a different. So, in fact, uh, you don't even have to translate from this strand. Remember, DNA is always two strands. You can't even translate from the bottom strand. Right, so, five prime, three prime. So, in fact, at the bottom strand, it will be, you will have C, T, C, G, T, C, A, T, five prime, three prime. At the bottom strand, you, you can start around translation this way. C, G, G. That's also code following. So there will be six different ways just for one sequence. But only the open reading frame gives you the functional one. So but if we look at the the current sequences, if we and what's the position of this? This is one twenty. So then I will just count 20, uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. 137. So this is a mutation of F137P. So I need just need to be able if you can do this in your lab, you probably get those questions right. So, do we just say it's a point mutation? In this case, this is a, a, 
this actually is not a point mutation because I changed the three nuclei. <laughs> it, so it's only a one change at the amino acid. So I'm actually quite surprised. I just randomly pick three, I change just one amino acid. <laughs> it's actually this the chance of that is actually one of the six, fifteen percent. Somehow I miracle it picked that. <laughs> so it, it's just happened a uh, very small chance. Eh? It is a point mutation. <laughs> uh, I was surprised myself to see this happen. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. But it, it happened to be just one chain on uh, the amino acid. It's actually not point mutation. You see, I chain three new papers. <laughs> so, so, what kind of mutation is this? So this is a mutation of F137P, and it is a mismatch. Uh, I guess you call it a. And this, no, this is not. This is a missense mutation. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's not point, it's a missense mutation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, okay. Let me say that. Isn't a missense mutation a type of point mutation? Uh, 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 Isn't okay. a missense mutation a type of point mutation? Like in point Not mutation? Not necessarily. Point mutation usually means one change, right? right. Missense mutation it means, um, can be multiple. It means uh, uh, the mutation gate of protein that wasn't expected. It, that it, was supposed to be. I mean, no answer. I mean, no, I say relative, yeah. Right. yeah. So, uh, yeah. but I guess in the, just to be clear, in the, in the, I don't think they will give you anything more complicated. Yeah. So, m most likely, a, a missense mutation you see in the exam is probably a point mutation. But, not a, in theory, they, they don't necessarily mean the same thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you can have uh, a lot of nuclear mm -hmm. mutation, mm -hmm. but it doesn't even change anything. <laughs> yeah, so. But that would be a uh, Yeah, but then you can also have one. Uh, so if you have multiple mutations there, multiple, only one of them give them, what do you call that mutation? Actually, not that straightforward to call, call it in that case. Yeah, so you, you, you can change all. Uh, maybe we can just skip it. But for in the exam, I think things often stay forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but um, just the little possibility it can be very complicated. Right? So, uh, like in my in my first example, somehow I put a mutation outside of the protein. <laughs> That's not my intention, but <laughs> it's like uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but. Uh, now uh, then the next question uh, will be, I also gave you the fiber. So with this set of fiber, uh, can, can, can I use this set of fiber to amplify the mutation region and follow by restriction and that You have to find that on the primer on the map. Uh, how, do, how do we do this? Go to APE and uh, click find. Yeah, Next. that's a good idea. Yeah, so I'm going to highlight the first primer, copy it, go back to APE, goes to the wild type one, and then just say find. Ah, let me see. T, 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 A, T, T, D, D, D. Okay, so that's a, uh, in, uh, they are the exactly the same sequence, so it is uh, this strand. Where did you go to press find? Uh, where do I go? Where's mine? Edit. Edit. Fine. Next. Yeah, fine. And then I can close it, go to features and new feature. And this is my primer one. And this is a, yeah, 